science. You know, generally one thinks of the guy in a lab coat blowing up stuff in the laboratory, or they're thinking about this. Gravity. But you know what? Science has so many other implications. Economically, socially, and, well, politically too. Well, what does the political realm entail? Politicians are the ones responsible for creating the legal boundaries of science in a country. I mean, and when we think about it, MPs are the ones making these decisions, but do they really have a science or engineering background? I mean, most of them are lawyers. And well, I mean, they're the ones dictating what goes on, regulating technology, pollution, and even the moral impacts of science. These guys have a lot of power, and they're the ones making the money decision. Sure, each ministry has a bureaucracy of highly educated individuals who are making policy, but policy sometimes doesn't always work with the politics. You know, I just, I just wish there was somebody who could explain all this to me, you know? Somebody who was like a politician or a scientist. Who, who has a science background and Chris, a political belt? Chris, uh, my name is Mark Garno, and, and I don't pretend to have all the answers. Uh, I've only got a PhD in electrical engineering, and I've only been, well, I was an astronaut once, and, uh, and um, well, I've designed equipment, things like that. So I don't, I'm not an expert. I, I don't have all the answers, but uh, I do agree that we do need to put a much greater emphasis on science in the Parliament of Canada, where we make the laws of this country, and all the things that we do should be based on the best scientific evidence available. Now, just to clarify, to say who you really are, mm. didn't you once say that climate change existed? I did, I did, and uh, you know, that's one of the things that um, perhaps our Prime Minister should get up and say. Yes, climate change does exist, and global warming is happening. I haven't heard him say it yet. Okay. That's something I would say. I think we have the real deal here. Let's get to the real questions about this. What's going on in science? Um, clearly, you've got quite a background in this. Um, what would you say is the field going to look like for uh, scientists and engineers coming out of university today? And what's standing in their way? I believe that uh, we need to uh, recognize that uh, science and engineering are f critical for the future prosperity of this country. Um, in terms of innovation, in terms of advancing our knowledge, in terms of helping us to make the best decisions uh, in government. For example, uh, we have a government at the moment that got rid of the long-form census. For those who are social scientists, they recognize that this is the most important database in the country to formulate social policy for this country. We should be using that data to craft policy for this government. Right. Now, and uh, how does the government play a role in science and technology in Canada? Do they get involved or is it very much a hands-off approach? No, they should get involved and they should consult scientists. One of the things that I would do is to bring back the National Science Advisor. That's somebody who can speak directly to the Prime Minister, tell him the good news and tell him the bad news, but actually tell him what is happening in science. Because we, as members of Parliament, need that best evidence available from science in order to craft policy. Since you've been in the position on the, on the student aspect, what do you, what do you think uh, students can do to improve their chances going forward? And do they need to get involved in the political realm at all? Or, or can they stri strictly stay within their nice laboratory and do all their research? Well, one of the things that scientists are particularly good at is doing research, but one of the areas where they perhaps could uh, improve their skills a bit is in being communicators. What they do is important, but scientists are very often not interested in communicating to the public and to politicians the importance of what they're doing. So scientists need to become more engaged in speaking to politicians, in speaking to the media, speaking to Canadians about the importance of what they're doing. Now what about the science in the future of Canada? Where, where does science go for Canadians? If you look at uh, countries that have been particularly successful in the knowledge-based economy, I think of examples such as uh, Israel, for example, which is a, a very uh, strong example. They've put a lot of emphasis on research and development, on science, and it's paying off that knowledge-based economy which is based on the skills of it and the education of its people and uh, the research and development that they are investing in is allowing the creation of new companies, it's allowing uh, jobs to be created, it's actually adding to the prosperity of the country. Now don't get me wrong, 
people should do science as well in the basic and fundamental sciences areas where there may not be any commercial returns, but we need to do a lot of science and we need to recognize how important it is. How else can the government help Canadians, Canadian scientists, do what they want to do best? By speaking, speaking publicly and strongly about how important science is in, in, in uh, guiding policy for this country, by recognizing that scientific evidence is important in, in terms of uh, making policy for this country. For example, you talked about climate change and global warming. We should allow our scientists who work with the government to speak freely. At the moment, they're being muzzled. That's not right. Evidence must be provided and, and, and put forward, and, and scientists should not be afraid, uh, should not be muzzled by, uh, by their political masters, because all they're telling is the truth. That's fair enough. Well, thank you, Mr. Garneau, for my answering pleasure. my questions. Thankfully, you know, we just run into these random people who are just sitting across from me at a table. And uh, do you want a beer? Yeah, sounds good. Sure. Well, please, go right ahead. Well, thank you very much. And Cheers. that's it for house sitting. All the best.